Do do do. We are streaming. All right. Yes. 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 All right. Back in effect. Hi, everyone. It's been a while. So, um, you know, I thought I'd uh, have some fun here with uh, some items that I was messing around with when we were developing 2018. So for me, the uh, Project Primitive was a big addition. Uh, so I started doing just these really quick little ships. Um, and even one of the beta testers had a good, had a good idea. Is like, it'd be cool to make them part of like a old school video gaming where it was just a 2D moving up and down. You guys, you remember those Nintendo days, right? Or go back all the way to Atari or even the arcades. So it'd be fun. So these are just some really quick um, ideas so that I have for some couple little ships and just think about having some fun with these. So I think for this stream, I really want to uh, hammer home this process that I was using to do these. Hi. Uh, mortar, mortar caner. Uh, so this are just some examples that I have. So this is the one that's inside of, uh, I have open inside of ZBrush. So this is just strictly nothing but project primitive. So I started with just a simple shape, nothing crazy, nothing major here. So I want to dive in here and see, show you guys um, what you could do with this um, and then also as we go along here we'll be answering the questions hi Joan okay so <clears throat> I I cuz for me uh, obviously I'm a big hard surface guy kick guy I really enjoy the hard surface mindset and workflow for myself so I found this to be a very different tool that could really get me to do things that I was never able to to do before okay so that's where it becomes really important for me so I'm gonna live a lot for this stream in the def in the deformer world we're gonna spend some time with some deformers okay so to start let's just uh, let's maybe you know maybe we'll kick out a couple of these let's just start with this basic shape let me show you how I got this shape this general shape of uh, that I have in this poly group right here this one how I got to that shape Okay, so all it was was just a cylinder. So I'm gonna grab the cylinder here. I'm gonna turn perspective off. I never like to have perspective on when I'm dealing with hard surface because there's just so many features with the hard surface wise that I kind of want to have an exact angle. I don't want any camera distortion to do things. Um, and then there's just a lot where I want to look definitely 100% straight on. So like, see, this is an orthographic view. I turn on the perspective. You see, it's got a little bit of a change there because perspective's on now, right? So hitting the P key or hitting that button over there or turn your perspective on and off. All right, I'm just going to turn the floor on because I want to look at this line here, this red line and this blue line. So the red is your X, the blue is your Z. So because I have a primitive selected right now, it's not actually a mesh that I can sculpt on. Hi, Zed Brush. I like that. That's a great username. What up, Dougie? It's been a while. So uh, we're going to throw on our initialize here, and I'm going to say along the, the Z. So I can say what alignment I want here. Okay. Number one, I can come in here and also manipulate and change the spans that we want in here. So maybe if you want this to be a little more softer or like have a smoother edge like this, you can definitely do that, right? So th th this is good enough. I'm not looking for something that's crazy. Now, the thing you got to understand if we're going to use, say, something like this, what's happening on these poles can be pretty important, right? Because when we start to use this project primitive, there's really not a lot of geometry here. Right, so you can of course use this slider here and you can see you can add more geometry, right? So you can use this slider to kind of space out the geometry however you want, okay? But I personally, hi Steven, um, don't like the pull at all, especially when I'm gonna do something like this with the project primitives. I kind of want to have 
a fairly equally distributed polygon. So there are many ways to go about doing this, okay? So I can, of course, just make this a mesh and we're good to go, right? And then I can throw on my DynaMesh here, right? And throw that on and now we've got something like this, right? So I got my polygons that I'm, I'm good with, right? Or we can just remesh it as well, right? Let ZBrush do some work on this. And we got a new remeshed version of this, okay? But I also want to highlight another way to do this. So let's grab, let's grab a tool, because this is going to lead us into Project Primitive as well. Let's say this piece here, this is good, right? We've got about 24,000 polygons, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn my floor off. We're going to hit that W key, right? Or W. Okay, and I'm gonna click on my little gear. So now we have these 27 deformers available to us. So I'm gonna click on the project primitive one now. All right, and I want a cylinder. And I'm gonna cover these. I, I found a very nice um, workflow for me with project primitive. I know some of you might be overwhelmed with the cones. Don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. Okay, so this yellow cone over here, all right, is our primitive type. Okay, so the first primitive is quadratic, the second primitive is super quadratic, then cylinder is the third one, and then a torus is the fourth one. So I want a cylinder, okay, so I'm going to change it to three, okay, and then what axis do I want? That's what this cone is. So obviously red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z. Now if I just start growing this out, you can see we're turning in this into a cylinder now, right? And what's happening right now is we got a bulging cylinder, and that's because of this pink cone over here. This is what makes Project Primitive really powerful, right? It has the capability to blend between shapes, okay? So I can blend this, right, and change it, but I can just say, just give me a cylinder, right? And then now I have this shape. So, of course, this is another way for us to make a cylinder, right? So it's just me grabbing a shape, I'm using Project Primitive. So it's really up to you as the artist what route you wanna go to, right? So let's just say this this looks good. I'm happy with this, L good to go, right? So now I've got my starting cylinder, okay? I'm gonna click the little orange gear and I'm gonna hit accept, right? That it now accepts and you can see the gear is no longer orange. So that's telling me that there is now no deformer attached at all to this, so it's just pretty much a cylinder. So I'm gonna click on this and let's grab the extender. This is one of my favorite deformers. I love this deformer. And this little green cone here, which again, X, Y, Z, right? Green being the Y, uh, red being your X, and blue being the Z, okay? So I'm gonna say, I wanna make sure this is turned on right? And I'm just going to pull on that. And then there you go. You start to get that shape that I wanted. And then I'm going to pull this way. And you can see how quickly I was able to change this shape around, right? And this is kind of my general starting shape for this little ship that I kind of want to start making, right? And I can go, man, let's make it a little bit longer. Let's go like that. Okay. And do I want creasing? Yes or no? Right, so that's what this orange, I mean orange, yellow cone is doing, is giving me the creasing here, right? I'm gonna say no. And then this white one is gonna give us inflation out or inflation in. So I'm a big fan of this deformer, okay? And all I'm trying to use this deformer now is take that cylinder and make it kind of like a unique shape and kind of get where I'm trying to go with this, okay? So I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so you can see again that this is gear is orange right now. So what that means is when I click on this, you can see there's Gizmo 3D, which will give us back our Gizmo 3D, and you see the, the gear is still orange. This is because I can actually switch back and forth between my Gizmo and, and between the deformer I'm playing with. So what also does that is the W key, as in wizardry. Since sorcery was said, let's do wizardry. Or like the movie The, the Wizard from the 80s, Savage, at Fred Savage, great video game movie. That's when Nintendo, I think, unveiled Metroid or maybe Super Mario Bros. 3, I don't remember. Okay, so I'm happy with this, all right? So then I'm gonna say, you know what? I know the way that Project Primitives is working 
It's solely based upon the geometry I'm using, okay? And it's going to add tessellation geometry at the same time, same token. So I need to add a little bit more geometry here. So I'm going to click on this gear, all right? And what I'm going to look for is multi slice. So I want this capability, right? And then now this is going to give me the capability to say, okay, what do we want? I want more slices along this route here, right? So these cones over here, right? Again, they're referring to X, Y, and Z, right? So by me saying I want this to have a width, right, in here, so this is giving me, I'm going to say, eh, that's enough, right? So the white cone is just saying how many spans you want across here, right? And then I can do the same now for the Z, right? So I'm going to pull on this, and let's just spread out the Z a little bit more. And I'm just I'm just eyeballing getting a somewhat equidistant, um, just enough geometry that can I can manipulate and play with, right? That's all I'm really worried about. I'm not trying to be perfect here because I know I'm going to have other things down the line to manipulate and play with. I'm going to say that that's good enough for me. Okay, so I'm used uh, the extender to give me my basic shape, and now I'm using the multi slice. There's add some great slices hey pro 4210 welcome to it right and uh, what's beautiful about this is this little blue dot in here allows me to actually move my slicing where i want along each one of the axis points if i want to move them around okay which is which is rather nice and then you have a yellow cone here that again will apply creasing to all the new geometry or not apply creasing right so i'm going to say mm-hmm 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 mm -hmm. I'm happy with this. I'm good to go. I like it. Okay. So then I say, let's click on that gear and accept it. So now this is what we're working with. Here, we'll make it all one poly group now. And I'm going to say, okay, this is enough. We got enough geometry here to start manipulating and playing with. Okay. And of course, if you wanted to, right, there's nothing stopping you guys from using this capability, right? Coming here to Z Remesher and saying, you know what, let's go to a thousand polygons and Z Remesh this if you want. So if you want to clean up the geometry, right? And give you the capability to give you something like this, to totally, you can do it. Whatever, whatever you want, right? Whatever way you want to go about this. It's, it's totally a, it's your world. It's your world. Okay. So see now I'm sitting pretty low. I'm sitting only at 2000, you know, I can, throw it up a little bit more and say something like this. There we go. Good to go. So I'm just trying to show ideas here of how we can start using deformers and continue to working and using other features. And I, cause I always see ZBrush is like, because I'm a fat kid, I like cake. It's a cake. There's layer upon layer things that you can do. I'm not saying you have to, but I, you can do. Or an onion, you know, you peel back and then you keep revealing more and then you cart crying more and then you cry some more. Okay. So, I'm going to say this is good enough, all right? So let's go ahead and go in our deformer again, the W key. I'm going to hit my gear, and let's go ahead and do our project primitive. And you can see it's remembering what our last piece was. It's kind of actually pretty cool. I'm kind of liking the look of this, okay? And it's remembering what we were doing with this deformer and remembering all the settings and the shapes. And the last time we used this, I turned a sphere into a cylinder, right? So that's pretty much what's happening here. So I'm going to click this gear right here again, and I'm going to say a full reset, okay? And what that does is resets the deformer. And now what we've done is reset everything back. And this is where I want to start now explaining things to help everyone out, okay? So right now the default is just projecting a sphere in there, okay? Now, when you guys start manipulating and playing with this, when you start playing with the cones, right? You'll notice that what happens? The polyframing comes on, right? So you start getting some polyframe in there. Okay. If you don't want that while you're playing with this, all you have to do is come over here. I'm going to turn on my magnifier so you guys can see really what I'm doing and see that there's a line and that there's a fill. So for example, watch if I turn off line, right? And then now I start playing with this. See, it just only shows the polygrouping. It doesn't show any of the actual geometry lines. So of course, if you turn off fill, 
and now you start playing with it. You start seeing everything, but you're not seeing the polygrouping. You're not seeing the edge looping or anything like that. So some people, you might want to work like this, okay, because it's just beneficial. Maybe you visually don't like having that geometry pop up or the polygrouping pop up. So this is a way for you to do that, okay? <clears throat> So Pro 4210 is asking about uh, the quick saves in 2018. Yeah, if Sculptra's Pro is being used, it's pretty intense on the, sy on the, on the system in essence, and we're doing a lot more uh, than we can when you're just normal sculpting because this is a different mode. So it is involving more memory, okay, which means file sizes will get bigger. So if your quick saves are taking longer, it could just be because you've been using so much Sculptures Pro and the file itself is larger. It's probably getting closer maybe to like a gig or 700 megabytes compared to just normal sculpting. Won't get to that level as fast as say maybe as something with Sculptures Pro. And then also ZBrush now has a built-in where it's looking at your memory and when it's getting to a certain plateau, it'll start deleting undos based upon your computer system. And you can control that in your undo. So there's a new slider here, reserve undo memory. So this is saying pretty much once I get to about a quarter of my memory that's filled, okay, start going ahead and start deleting older undo history. And so of course, when you're doing quick saves, it's also looking at this option. You see this undo history option. That's saying to save the undos with your quick save. So if you turn that off, your quick saves might even go a little bit faster because then it's not saving with your um, quick saves. So there's this feature is saying to save the undo history, which that starts adding more size to your file. Um, and then this slider here again is controlling when does it start dumping memory um, when you're Dealing. And specifically, you don't probably see a lot of the memory um, undos being deleted unless you're pretty much mostly using Sculptures Pro. Okay, so that's good. And someone made a nice little sketch here. So we're going to go through this little link that they're, they're putting in here. Okay, so I got this project primitive. So I'm starting to make some kind of ship in here. But before I get into this, I want you guys to completely understand the easy way that I can explain all these cones. I know maybe for you it's overwhelming, but if you if you just sit down, get your popcorn, get your, your soda, your drink ready, if you take this approach I'm about to show with you, trust me, you're going to have aha moments, and you're going to see the, uh, the, the crazy power of Project Primitive and what you can do with it, all right? So, of course, this is now attached to the primitive that we're playing with, right? So as I move up, you know, I'm doing this, and the higher I go, then it starts projecting inward like so it's taking a bite out of crime right because this is sitting outside the surface and more importantly you see this bounding box that's the bounding box of the primitive and you can see there's a second bounding box that's the bounding box of the actual sub tool that we're working on so let's just for the sake of understanding over here I've got these three cones okay there's a pink a purple and a white and then I've got these three cones over here Let's go ahead and take this purple cone and let's just turn it on, okay? And you can see I can now pull completely out and I got this floating sphere. And this is where I want you guys to have the understanding here of where I'm bringing up these individual bounding boxes, okay? So you can see this bounding box is just looking at the primitive that I'm playing with or that I'm using to affect the bounding box here, which is the original subtool that I have. Okay, so what I want you, everyone, to think about these cones as, as these cones here on this box are local cones in essence. They're locally affecting the primitive, right? Okay, so it's about what primitive I'm using, the rotation of the primitive, the clipping of the primitive, all right? These cones down here, think of them more as almost like a global setting. So it's globally affecting the primitive, okay, and uh, doing something. So if you start looking at just these cones, okay, these cones are just only affecting where I do stuff to the primitive. So as an example, the purple cone is just changing, okay, the primitive to be a projection. 
So you see it's not projecting into the surface at all or to be more like an insert mesh brush, right? So the higher you put the cone, all it's doing is adding density. So it's just adding more polygons. So I'm gonna turn on the polyframe mode and then do this, right? So you can see as I go higher and lower, you can see there's just geometry being added. That's all the purple cone is. But the minute you turn the purple cone to one, that's telling ZBrush, hey, treat this more as kind of like just an inserted mesh, okay? So that way you have this capability. Now, when I switch and turn it off, you can see there's more cones come up, right? Because now we're in the blend mode to blend the primitive. And now because the primitive is not sitting over top of anything, nothing's gonna happen. So if I start pulling it down, this is when we start having stuff like this happening, right? And then I can say, okay, I kind of like where this is. I'm gonna, I like having maybe a little bit more shape like this. So this is gonna be maybe where, where my pilot sits, okay? All right, and I'm gonna say, I like that. That looks pretty good, okay? So remember, you see the two bounding boxes? Now, if you start thinking about the way I'm talking about this, Here's these cones are just attached to the primitive and these cones are attached to the primitive box, okay? We now know the purple cone is causing it to go from, in essence, a blending with the existing mesh or just an insert mesh brush, right? The pink cone is how do you want this to blend, right? And you can see you can play with this blending capability. So I don't want any blend at all. So I'm gonna bring it down because I want it to stay kind of, I want some harshness there. Okay, and I want to up the resolution a little bit. Okay, so I don't. I want to get rid of some of this faceting. So that's that's a global geometrical thing that's doing something to the surface overall. Because remember, now I'm projecting this into this piece. So over here, okay, these settings here, I can actually see start adding some tessellation. So you can see I can start making that sphere shape be a little bit more smooth. Okay. And in fact, I don't like so far what we got, so I'm gonna actually going to divide this up a little bit more and make it be a little bit more smooth, maybe something like, that's better. I just wanted to smooth this a little bit more. And then we'll go back now to the project primitive, and guess what? It remembers what I was doing, right? So it still remembers those settings that I was manipulating and playing with, right? So this is the beauty of why we made it so it can remember Right, and then this is why we added a feature, like when we click on the gear, the full reset. So by default, it's remembering the last time I manipulated the, this project primitive, but at any time I can full reset, okay? So the only way to subtract, Mike, is by pulling on the surface and pulling it out. That, that's what triggers it to be a subtract. Okay, if it's sitting with inside the surface, it's not going to add as a subtract. But there are other deformers that I could do stuff with, and I'll show you that for sure. Okay, I'll show you a way that you can do kind of what you're asking. All right, we'll do it up here in the front maybe we'll, as a test. We'll do that. Okay, so I, I kind of like this. All right, so I'm going to say I I like where this is at. I like the shape. I like the form that I'm going. So this white cone here, you can see that's my accept cone. I'm accepting what I have here. So I can click on this, and now that's accepted. And notice that the cones moved, right? It's because the bounding box has now overall changed, right? So I'll undo. So you see the main bounding box is only looking at this shape. And I redo, see the bounding box just changed. Because now the whole mesh, okay, is really this also this little bulging piece that I added here, right? But the primitive box isn't going to change because I haven't changed anything to the primitive itself. And all I did is I just accepted. Now, this is the same thing as clicking on this gear and going to accept. However, as I'm working with this project primitive, I want to, I want to move. I want to move it and shake it. I'm moving and shake it, right? So if you guys hit accept, do you see what does it do? It comes out of the actual deformer. And now to get back on the project primitive, I got to go back into it, hit the gear, right? And go back into project primitive. That's, that's not the workflow I want, right? Because I want to be able to now, okay, I want to work on this. And now maybe I want to start pulling out and maybe changing the size and doing things like this, right? So you can see I've undid the accept. So 
by me going here and saying, let's accept that, I can now continue to work and use the same exact sphere and do something like this, right? So you can see this is the benefit of that white cone, right? Noticing also what I've done here is I've got a little protrusion happening there. So that's what these white dots are for, right? So I can tell ZBrush to cut this. Right? So these little white dots are just pushing on the surface. So you can see you do stuff like this. I can say grab this one and we can start having a shape like that if we want. Okay? And it's just about grabbing these little white dots right here, pulling up, right? And pulling back. So I don't want that little protrusion, so I'm just going to use this to push it in. And now this is really I'm happy with this. Okay? So I accept, right? I'm going to start pulling this out. Okay, and I'm going to say maybe change the size of this, maybe be a little bit smaller. And then now what I want to do is work symmetrically. Okay, so I'm working on this side, but I also want it to happen on that side. So that's why there's these cones here. These again are referring to X symmetry, Z symmetry, and Y symmetry. So all I have to do is pull on the red one, right, because I want it along the X, and now I have it on both sides. Right, so I'm going to say, yeah, I want something like that. That looks good. Here's where the accept is going to come in handy. I accept it. And you see now the bounding box has changed again. But this is still the same. And then this is where I'm going to come to, say, this yellow cone, which are my primitives. Okay? And I'm going to say, let's change this to a primitive that's a torus. And you can see the box has changed. And I want to change this to be this to be not along the Y, but along the X, like that, okay? And I still have symmetry on. And what I'm going to do is start pushing this in. And so you can start doing cool stuff like this, right? And then I can change the size of this if I want and maybe do something more like this. And you can see I can now see that little clipping I'm doing. So I just got to pull this out and I get that back, right? And then now that I'm dealing with the torus, there are actually two orange cones here, right? So look at it this way. Looking profile this way of the torus, in fact, here, let's turn it into a purple, okay? So you got a torus that you can affect this way, and you can also affect the profile of the torus this way. So one orange cone is affecting one profile. The other orange cone is affecting another profile, okay? So this one is going to affect this profile, right? So you can see I'm just making the cone or the torus have a larger opening or a smaller opening, okay? This is going to affect this profile. So you do want it to be sharp like this, right? Or do you want it to be really sharp like that or just kind of a little bit softer on the edges or go back to being kind of a round shape, right? So this really gives me a lot of variations and different options here, right? So if we turn this purple cone back down, Right, you can see I can really start messing with this and having some fun with this, right? And then play maybe make this do something like that instead. Right? It's 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 my world. Happy little trees. Right? And this is becoming more of a this is becoming more of a solid cylinder that has an opening in the hole with the solid shape. So I don't I don't want that. I kinda want it to stay a little soft like this. Right, and I don't want this shape to be this big. I want something more like that. Right, and then I'm happy with that. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Okay, and then I'm going to say, let's come back to primitive one, which by default, okay, that primitive is a sphere. Right, and then now I'm going to dig in a little bit more here. Okay to this. Now, this is, let's go back to the purple cone, right? And you can clearly see it's a sphere, right? And then now you can see you only have one orange cone because this is why it's called quadratic, okay? So I have this quadratic capability where I can take this sphere and pulling it out, it turns into a cube. So going all the way to one, right, turns it into a cube. So anything be between 0.5, Okay, so 0.5 is a perfect sphere 
to one, you're going to get a, like a variation of a cube. So see, that's a cube with rounded edges now, right? And what you guys can do is while you're grabbing this cone, hold the shift key and you can snap from point. So you go 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1. So I can snap back to 0.5, get a perfect sphere. And then, of course, if I go all the way down to 0, you're getting a diamond now. Right? And then, of course, from 0 to 0.5, you're getting a range, right, between those. This is why they're called a quadratic. Okay? So this is involving me to have different kind of shapes. Okay? So this is really going to help me. I was just reading a question. Okay, so I'm going to keep this kind of like the sphere, and then I'm going to keep it as a negative because I want to dig it a little bit more into this like that. Then I'm going to say accept that, right? And then now I'm going to take this and just push it in so I get something like that. And then maybe that's a window, and that's like the cockpit where my guy is going to sit. And then this is the window, and maybe let me make the window a little bit bigger, something like that, right? Uh, kind of like a little bit smaller. Yep. Mhm. Mm right. So now I'm starting to get this kind of little shape that I have going on here. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to say I accept that. All right. Let's go ahead and do a full reset, and now let's go to that one question that was being asked. Okay. So if you're looking at the polyframing here, right, we got multiple polygroups, okay? So what you guys can do is, again, turn this purple cone on, all right? Let's put this, I don't know, somewhere like here, all right? And then this is a shape that's just a spherical shape, right? Now, we know if we turn off this, right, we can have this kind of start pushing into the surface, right? But to the question, they wanted to just, I'm assuming I want this just to be a negative, okay? So I'm going to turn this back to this little primitive like this, okay? And then I'm going to say, let's go and say the accept. So we got this. I just, because I want to show you the overall view. So we've got multiple polygrouping here, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to select out just this sphere now, okay? And I'm going to come over here into polygroups, and I'm going to click this. Group as a dynamic sub. So you can see that's what now? That's a negative. Okay, so that's actually being telling ZBrush that that sphere is now been tagged as a negative. So I'm going to bring everything back like this. Okay, we're going to click our W key to bring back our gizmo. I'm going to click the gear and I'm going to say remesh by union. Let it do its process. Okay, and then there you go. I just cut it out. And now I have that shape happening in this ship. So this is a way, this is why we made now the live Boolean its own deformer. I can start doing stuff like this. And guys, think about it, in the most cases, I'm staying just all within this one little floating menu to start doing things, right? So percentagely, 90% of the time, I'm staying in the menu. The only thing that would have dragged me out of this menu was grabbing, going over here and clicking that little button right there, right? Which I could have made it a shortcut okay so I saw a question about clay tubes right and clay tubes constant brush so you're talking about this brush here like what's the difference between this brush right and then grabbing clay tubes itself this brush right what's really the difference here between the two, right? That's what you're asking. Uh, so I'd have to go in these settings here. You're going to have what's really looking at the brushes, okay? Are There are some particular menus that are very important, okay? So some of these menus is your samples, okay? And some of these menus is in your modifiers. What also becomes a very important menu is your depth and your curve, okay? So these menus are going to start playing a significant role. So if you just, even for you, all of you, want to start seeing what is the difference between the brushes, if you just start opening up, say, menus like this, and you can see, switching between these, and what you're looking for, are there any changes in, say, like these major menu here, right? 
So you're looking for any changes. And you can tell there's there's nothing changing, right? So here's clay, clay tubes constant, depth samples, and modifiers. They're all staying the same, right? So there's no changes in those menus, okay? So I'd have to take a look, honestly, because I don't know what we've added. Um, this was made by a, a colleague, so I don't know what that colleague uh, turned on. There's just one setting turned on, and uh, I'm not sure what they turned on here. Let's see. Nothing in there. Um, there'll be nothing in auto masking. Nothing there. So honestly, I honestly I don't know. I don't know the difference between the two. I'd have to see here, and no, nothing's going to be in there. Um, and see, they might have did something in the alpha as well. Uh, let's see. So your strength is a hundred. Max. Okay. So let's see if there's anything here in the alpha. Okay, so let's grab the alpha palette and put it here. And let's see if we get any change through here. So there's clay tube, constant. I'm not seeing any difference myself either. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the answer for you. I'm going to have to see who made that. Yes, we are aware, Nacho, that the smooth group border does not work the same. So you're good to go. Right, what could be actually here, you know what could be? Here, let's look at the last thing could be lazy mouse. All right, let's see. And then let's go to clay tubes. Oh, that's not it. I thought maybe that would be it. You're not going crazy. I'm not seeing any major feature changes. So I'll have to find out um, what they added to that clay tubes constant. Okay. Okay, so back to this this little ship I'm making. So I'm gonna undo this because I don't want that in this part. Or maybe maybe I do. Maybe I maybe I changed my mind. Maybe maybe I, I maybe I do like it. Okay. So I'm gonna say that looks good. All right, let's come back into this and let's go here back to our project primitive. Okay, so I got my primitive again. All right, yeah, you know what? Maybe let's size this down. Let's turn it back into a projection and let's start putting this to have like some kind of front end part. So we'll push it in so it starts doing something like that. Right, so I start getting a shape like this. I don't know if now we're becoming more of a ship or a gun. <laughs> I don't know what one we're I'm becoming now, right? So I'm gonna change the size of that. That looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit more tessellation here. Right, so make that be a little bit more softer. Right, uh, have a little bit more smoothness to it. Okay, I, I'm i liking that. Okay, so over here, that white cone, I click on that. I'm going to go do a full reset. Okay, let's put some wings on this. So I'm going to pull this out. All right, maybe let's size this way down. All right, I definitely want to work symmetrically, so I'm going to turn on this red cone. So it's happening on both sides, okay? So then I'm gonna say, all right, I don't want obviously a, a sphere, okay? So I know this first primitive, okay, is what? It's a quadratic, right? And I can change this shape. Okay, so then I'm going to turn this to a cube. Right, and you can see it's being blended in. Right, hold on, I'm reading a question. Paul, once you make a polygroup as group as dynamesh sub, how do you return that polygroup to normal? You just recreate it as a, another polygroup, right? So I could even say select this polygroup, right? And you click this. See, it's just, it's just now a group as a sub, right? This is still a polygroup, so I can click it and then I just control W there. Now it's not triggered as a sub anymore. Now it's back to being a normal polygroup. Okay? That's how you would do that. All right? So you can convert back and forth whatever you want. Okay? So clicking on this, okay, is you're now looking at this, I, all right, and saying, I don't want this to blend, so I'm going to turn the blending down. Okay? Now I have that blending. Okay? 
So then if I start dragging on this, right, I can start now manipulating this shape, pulling this out, and start putting some, you know, some kind of nice little wings in there. Maybe I want these wings to have a little bit of an angle. Okay, something like this. All right, so I got a, a little bit of angle to that wings. I'm gonna turn off the framing so I can look at what I'm making here and say, all right, let's add a little tessellation to this, clean that up a little bit. And then I also want to blend this a little different. So you can see I'm adding a, adding a tapering. So this over here, there are three cones. There's a green cone, a blue cone, and a red cone, okay? So I want to add, change the opacity. So this is changing the opacity along the Y. So what that's doing is adding, adding that taper. So we'll go this so you can see, I can start adding a little bit of taper this way, and then maybe along the Z, add a little bit of taper. So it starts coming like that. And then now I wanna make this be wider. Maybe do something more like this. Right, and then maybe not that wide, right? Or maybe I do wanna go this wide, okay? And so it's not clicking this, right? These little white circles here, I'm gonna hold the shift key this time and start pulling it in and you can see, right, what that's doing. So if you're not holding the shift key, it does one side, right? And then this is what I have, okay? If I hold the shift key, and then click on these, it does both sides for me at the same time, right? So I can dial this in, maybe do something more like that, and maybe something more like that, and now I have a shape that is starting to give me this look of what I have. You can absolutely bring in your primitives from 3D Studio Max and do your Boolean and projections here, absolutely. Yeah, the Boolean system can take any primitive object, right? So that's totally possible. And you don't have to use a deformer. You can use the subtool way to do it as well. No, there is no way to change the color selector. So what you're asking about, someone's asking about when you're holding the C key, we can grab any color that's available inside of ZBrush. No, that's that's hard coded. You, you can't change that. You can add a shortcut to make it be something different, right? If you wanted to, okay? You can definitely do that. Okay, so that's what this is doing, okay? Is it's just grabbing the color by C key. You can also grab the color this way. You can click and drag, and you can grab colors this way as well, right? So I can grab colors that way, but there is no way to change the C key, okay? So I'm moving along here. I'm getting happy with what I got, right? And then I start saying, okay, let's gear, let's do a full reset, okay? Now I've got this spherical shape. I definitely don't like this. So I wanna be able to do that, okay? And then I'm gonna say, all right, let's pull this up in here. Let's start pulling it out more and more so it starts creating a negative, right? And maybe let's turn this now into more of a cube shape, right? So that's going to do this. Right, and now I start manipulating this different and say I want that to happen. Okay, and I don't want it to cut into this surface. I want something like that. I'm gonna turn off my quick saves here. We don't need no quick saves. I don't need them. So let's turn them completely off. So I'll put my sliders to 600, which is like 10 hours. Okay, so this is, again, just again, giving me the capability to change this shape, right? And you can see I can make it be nice and solid in there. I can manipulate and change this however I want. You know what, maybe it is becoming more like a gun now. <laughs> right, and now maybe that's what I want for in this area. Okay, then I accept that, right? And I wanna get back now to a default sphere shape. Okay, click on this, do a full reset. Now I'm back to a sphere shape and let's put a little bit of a 
kind of a little bulged area up here on the top. I don't want it affecting all the way into that. I kind of want it to slowly go through there and slowly come through in here. Make sure it's not affecting this inside portion that I worked on. Right, and then maybe start pulling this up and seeing, do I like that? And then start blending it differently, put more of a blend in there. So there's a little bit of a bulge happening, okay? And let's uh, kind of, I'm all right with it blending more like this, right? And then of course, if I start adding tessellation, right, that line is gonna become more pronounced with the more tessellation I start to add. Right, so you can see it's a lot sharper now because I've added more tessellation, right? So if we turn on our polyframe, you can see the tessellation that's happening there, right? So I can, I can bring this down, right? It's really up to me how much do I really want to have there, right? So now this is just some kind of little other portion that I have here, okay? Oh, I undid, and undid my wings. I did too many undos. Okay, and then I say I'm accepting that, right? I'm going to go and do a full reset because now I want to put something in the back, right? I want to have the back end have something. And do I want this? <laughs> no, I'm going to say let's turn it into a kind of a more cube. Okay, and then I'm going to make it be a little bit not as pronounced. Let's not have as much blending happening, maybe. Okay. And say, let's go more like that. Let's move this up like that. And just, this is the beauty of it. I'm just freely just designing and trying to figure out maybe happy accidents, right? Doing stuff like this, right? Do I really like what's happening in here? No, I'm not a fan of that. Okay, maybe we'll do this, and then now I'll maybe taper it like that, and then taper it along this way. Okay, and I don't want it affecting as much. I want more of that shape happening. And then now let's make it wider, or longer, I should say. Now it's longer. So I don't know where I'm going with this design. Just, it's been turning into a wonderful mess. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing with the project primitive, okay? So let's, let's start over now. <laughs> let's get something that's more to the basics here, right? So I'm just going to start with a sphere, okay? We'll delete these, and then I will push down into this, and let's just start making a shape. So... What I'm turning the floor on because I like to kind of keep myself in X symmetry, right? And make sure the front of the ship, maybe, or what I'm making is facing that direction. I want it to face that direction, right? So I'm going to say, all right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and do a project primitive. Okay, let's bring this to the front. All right, let's blend this now. All right, and let's also change the opacity to maybe be more like that. Okay, and let's play more with this blend mode. Okay, I'm actually liking this for the, the back. So maybe this is actually gonna be better for the back. We'll make this be a lot wider. Okay, and now I've got that shape. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to accept that. Okay, and now I'm going to pull this same shape out. This is the beauty of that accept. Then I'm reusing this shape now, right? And so I can say no opacity, right? And then now I'm just playing with the size of this shape, all right? And here we'll turn off the line in the fill so we can see what's happening. I want a little bit more tessellation. I don't want any blending definitely not as much and then now I'm just gonna find the size of the cube I like here let's go to no blend something more like that is looking better we'll do like that and then maybe this will be some kind of thrusters right that I have okay so I'm gonna say all right I like that 
Let's go ahead and accept that. All right, and I'm gonna do a full reset. All right, and let's turn this into a cube. All right, and then now I'm getting a little bit of this shape. Maybe let's play with that a little bit. Do I like this kind of shape in here? Mm, nah. So let's do this. Let's make it a full cube. Okay, let's bring it to the back here. Let's turn on that purple cone. Okay, so it's becoming a, in essence, an insert mesh brush primitive. Okay, and I'm going to size this down, like maybe like this. Let's size it down like that. Maybe let's go like this. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the Q key, right? So this is switching from the primitive to Q. Okay, so now that I have this, right, this is, we'll turn on polyframe again. This is its own piece, right? So I'm gonna switch to the just the gizmo, hold down the control key and tap, right? That masks every other polygroup out, but this polygroup that I'm working on, okay? And I'm just gonna move this over here. This is why I did the purple cone. So it's not projecting into the, the surface, it's just in essence an inserted mesh. And you can absolutely create your own library primitives. Uh, absolutely, Go. you can do whatever you want. There's a lot of people that do do that and create insert mesh brushes and everything, okay? So if I want this, I can now hold the control key click on this and say, yeah, let's make a distance like that. I'm not gonna take my pen off the Cintiq, but I'm gonna let go of the control key, and now I can have the equidistant of those. So now I have that happening, right? So let's do that again so everyone can see exactly what I'm doing here, right? So I have first polygrouped, the, I have my polygroups, I'm using that as a masking capability, right? And then I'm saying, okay, while I'm in just the gizmo mode, hold control, click on this, and now I'm gonna say, what's the gap do I want, okay? So my finger's still on control, and my hand is still on the Cintiq, because I got a Cintiq or a tablet, all right? If I let go of control, and now just move my hand, you can see I get the same equidistant going across the whole thing, right? And then now I can hold control and tap on this, right? And then now I can move these as a unit wherever I want, and then there you go. So now I've got like that kind of vent happening back there, right? So I can start playing with this and say, let's bring it forward a little bit more, right? And then maybe you wanna make a design change and maybe make it have an angle, maybe even change it like this, right? Maybe we'll do a little bit more like that. So that there's even a little bit of a gap in there, just design-wise, you're looking for something more like this, let's say. Okay, so you can see I'm just manipulating these and playing in a different way with this, all right? So let's throw a cockpit on this now, okay? So let's go ahead, hit the W key, right? You can see that this is not orange. See how that's not orange? That means there's no primitive, I mean, no deformer has been touched at all, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my project primitive. It was a cube. I don't want a cube. I'm gonna grab this orange cone. I'm gonna hold the shift key so it's more like this, right? I'm gonna bring this back down so it's blending and let's put a little bit of a, a cockpit in this now. And maybe we'll make it have a little bit more shape like that. I don't wanna affect the bottom of my design. I only wanna affect the top. Okay, something like this. And then maybe I start playing. Do I want it to do that? I'm not decided yet, maybe do a little bit of that, right? This is the beauty of that, right? You have an opacity, but you also have a global opacity, right? So this is doing all of it uniformly, right? But maybe you wanna even make the cockpit kind of have that look, right? So that's what this is doing, right? Having a little bit change there, maybe change in that direction as well, so I'm changing the slope of this, and then now maybe changing the overall size, okay? And then maybe less blend, okay? And adding just a bit more resolution, so that's very 
a define point right in here, right? Maybe that's that's what I want, okay? I accept that now. See the bounty box changes, uh, okay? And then now I say, boom, let's do a full reset, okay? Let's add maybe some wings this way, okay? I want it to be symmetrical, so I want to see what's happening here, right? And I'm going to say, let's go more, much more flat like this. Maybe pull it out like this, right? And then let's say, do I want to play with the opacity maybe? A little something like this. Let's put a little angle on it. Maybe something more like that. Do I want to make them a little bit more squared? Maybe. And let's play with the opacity this way. Okay, so we start doing, and I'm looking around and just seeing my overall shape. Because if you notice, Notice right in here. So this is where turning on the polyframe could help, right? Because you can see this polygroup, you can see it's affecting certain portions of the mesh. So I'm going to chop that down by doing this, see? I'm going to grab that white and we're good to go. And let's add some more tessellation in here, right? Just so it's more of a defined shape. You know what? I'm going to go a little bit more squared off. All right, and then let's make it taper a little bit more. And maybe design-wise, I want it to be, yeah, I prefer the shorter wings. I'm preferring that look a lot more. Okay, and then maybe, do I want them to be more forward? Do I want them to be more towards the back? Right, do I even want these to have an angle more like this? And then now maybe I, I need to bring this back. Right, maybe that's more the shape I'm trying to go for. Something more like that. Okay. And then I'm going to say, all right, I like it. It looks good. Let's accept that. Okay. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and I'm going to do a full reset. Boop. Right. And then let's bring this forward now. Okay. And I'm going to size this way down. Okay. And I'm going to turn on symmetry capability here. And let's pull these apart. And do, this is starting to remind me of batteries not included. That's where this is starting to go for me, which is a great fun movie. It's a very fun movie. I'd recommend watching it and looking, looking it up. It's a very cool movie. It's a Steven Spielberg produced movie. So I'm going to say no blend. I want something like this. Let's size it down. Let's say something like that. Okay. Let's have an elongated a little bit so it's not such a perfect spherical shape so give me something a little bit more like that let's see what the blending okay I'm kind of liking that blending now I'm going to accept that and then now the beauty is I can reuse this shape and I can use C to cut in and now I got something like this we'll size that down just a bit so that there is a variation here right and now I got something like that Okay, let's go ahead and accept that. Okay, and let's make this be purple. So I got this shape and then now get it back to 0.5. Size that down and now these are like some little lights. It's definitely now underwater. It's not a plane. We're going wee on the, the sea. On the, the sea. Look at me, I'm on the, the sea. Right, and then I accept that. I'm kind of liking that. Now let's maybe let's have some fun over here. Okay, so let's bring a shape out here. All right, and bring this down. Maybe something like this. Okay, let's let's actually stretch that out. Let's grab an angle now. Whoops, I don't want that. I want this. Position this where I want that to be. Okay, I also rotated. A little bit in that direction so let's go bigger with this and let's put this so it becomes a part of the the wing here let's go a little bit bigger like that okay and then maybe let's clip it here and let's clip it here all right and then let's add some other elements to this so let's go ahead accept that Okay, let's turn blending mode back on. 
And again, we can use this shape to cut into this. All right, and this is the beauty of that white cone, right? And manipulating this and doing what I want, right? So I'm actually going to change to a cylinder, right? Because I want to start doing this and maybe making it a little bit longer. And I want to play with the tapering and the shape of this, right? So this is going to taper one direction and the other direction, right? So I can start adding a little bit of taper there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's accept that. All right, now let's push in and not as long. Let's do something like this. And now we'll make it a lot longer. So it just picks out like this. And then what taper, how much tapering do we want? Let's say that looks good to me. I accept that. Let's pull this out. Okay, and now let's go to, I just switched to that torus. Right, and then now I can manipulate this and start doing and cutting into the shape, right, and playing maybe with how sharp it's going to be. And maybe let's play with this, do something more like that. Okay, so I'm liking that. Let's add a little bit more tessellation in there. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to accept that. Let's reuse this torus some more to put, there you go, maybe something like that. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to accept that. Okay, and then now maybe let's push it to the back. And let's, let's see what we can do in here. Uh, right, I don't, uh, not a fan of this. Right, see, it's affecting this portion as well, right? So maybe I'll just come out like this and let's size it down and then let's go longer with it. All right, so I have something like this. You know, and let's let's clip it a little bit. So you see I'm just using now all these features together as one. Right? I'm just combining these and saying, okay, I like that. I accept it, right? So we just keep building upon this, okay? And keep going this, right? So this is becoming, you know, being able for me to just have a lot of freedom and start manipulating the pieces and start going with wherever I wanna go with this, right? And what's, again, what's key about this is this blending capability, right? So at any time I wanna start putting some kind of maybe other part on this, Right, we'll put a little bit more blend in here. And then now I can start using this as a blending between maybe in here. Maybe the design is gonna have a little different of a, a blend happening through here. Yeah, there, happy little trees. Right, Bob Ross style. All right, and then start manipulating this. Okay, I don't like that. I don't want it to affect the bottom. Okay, and you can see this is really looking weird, right? But this is why I can also start doing besides this blend, okay, of how it's blending with the shape that we're manipulating. Okay, you also have a displacement mode. Okay, so that's this orange maximum displacement. So that's pretty much saying how much can even the sphere, see, blend with in, so, right? So in essence, it's it's clipping the sphere capability. So now I can have a blend mode like this happening, right? And then I'll have, I'll play a little bit with my opacity, add some more tessellation to this, right? And now I can start having a blend like this, right? So. The tessellation gave me more of that density right in here, okay? And the displacement, it's kind of like clipping this. So the displacement, the best way I can show this to you is here, let me let me get something else for you. My, come on, my, my pen is all of a sudden not working. Come on, pen. 
I just lost my pen. All right, we'll have to switch to mouse. Okay, so as an example, here, we'll just grab a sphere. Okay, we'll make this a mesh. Okay, we'll let's divide it up once and delete that so it's just got nicer, smoother surface. Let's go ahead and switch back to uh, project primitive. Okay, and I'm going to pull that out. Right, and by default, right, we've been manipulating this, so let's go to a full reset. So we get just the sphere. Okay, let's convert this to a cube. All right, like that. And let's have less blending, right? So pretty much turn the blending off, right? Now watch what the displacement's gonna do for us. If I turn this orange cone, see what it's doing? It's still cube shape, right? But it's not allowing to be all the way cube. So then what's happening is the projection is now changing to allow me to pick up that spherical shape below it, right? So this can allow you to do some pretty cool, like stuff like maybe you want the corners to have a clip like that. So it's flat here, but I'm starting to change a little bit, okay, to this and starting to, well, we need the tessellation. That's important. Right, so this is what the displacement is really going to help with, is being able to see, you can really gauge how much displacement. It's just really clipping how much that cube is affecting the surface. Right, so of course I can kind of do this, right, and then move this. So I like to use this maybe as like a some kind of panel, right? I can start doing things like that, right? And you can see more and more displacement. Right, you can really make some unique shapes here. Right, just by messing with that cone, this cone right here, this max displacement. Right, so if I bring it up, right, I can completely get rid of it and have it be very subtle displacement, right? If I do something like this, right? So now this looks like just some little panel right, that's on the surface, right? And then I can say, oh, I like this. Let's go ahead and let's accept that, right? And then maybe now we say, all right, let's bring it back to being, uh, let's do sphere again, right? And then now I can size this down and now I got that happening, right? Because I'm, I love that I'm upside down. This is still on, right? So if I turn this off, then you get that. If I turn this back on, right, you can get stuff like this, which could be very cool, right? You can start doing a lot of fun stuff with this and manipulating this, changing this where you want it to be, right? And then if you're adding symmetry, I can have it on this side and on that side. Now I got it on both sides. Maybe go a lot smaller with it. Right, and start positioning this. Maybe I want it to be in the corner. Like that. Let's size it down. And do a little movement here. Right, I'll add a little tessimation to it maybe less displacement, so it does that, right? And then I accept that, right? So this is what displacement is gonna help be able to do stuff like this. It's kind of clipping, it's taken on the shape, okay? Right, so this is really helping us out with that. Okay, what's the uh, second question? So changing this to a low polygon, I actually don't like what I was doing before. That's just ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly. Okay. This is seen at 735,000 polygons, right? So the easiest and fastest way is to Z remesh this. That's going to be the fastest way. Okay. So all I have to do is decide, do I really need to remesh these? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these and I'm going to split them apart so that they're their own subtool now, 
right? Because this whole thing is one subtool. And then with symmetry on, okay, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a Ziri measure. Now, I can say I can put this at 0 0.5, which is 500 polygons. When this remeshes, though, it's looking at very particular things or rules coming into play here. It's looking at the sculpt. It's evaluating the sculpt. It's seeing what it's doing, right? And it's adjusting that based upon the sculpt. So even though I'm set to 0.5, that doesn't mean I'm going to get 500 polygons. So we can use this in this sense, right? Okay. Or we could do this. We can now switch, okay, to these ways to remesh. Okay. So there's a dynamesh. Okay. There's a union. There's a Z remesher. And there's a decimation. Right. So I can even switch to Z remesher. Right. It sees the bounding box. Okay. Here's my symmetry. So I want symmetry on, and then now I can do this, and I can say an exact polygon count. So I'm going to say, well, it's not exact. It's it's still going to give you, there's still the rule. So I'm going to say around 7,000, okay? And then now this is remeshing. So this is going to allow us to stay within this mode where I can quickly remesh things using this deformer, Okay. So I'm allowing this to finish this up and I had it set to be, give me around 7,000. So it's going to vary based upon, you know, what we're doing. So then there you go. So there's this, there's, it's giving me 19,000 because you have to remember I had symmetry on. So when you have symmetry on, it's actually giving me 7,000 on one side. And again, this is not an exact number. And then it needs to give me 7,000 on the other side. Right, so as an example, if I undo this, okay, and say, give me, let's say, 1,800. So symmetrically, it's going to give me 1,800 on both sides. That's what this deformer is doing. Okay, so these are just your symmetry. So saying, do you want to do you want to remesh along the Y, the X, and the Z symmetrically? You just pull them out, and then this cone is just giving you what polygon count target are you going for you can see and then this is what i can get and i can say mm, i don't like that and then the beauty of this i can say give me more around this and it'll go through the process again i don't have to do actually i don't have to do an undo because it's re remembering what the state of this was before i start even doing all this okay so this is a technique that you can definitely use right to manipulate this and then those lights i put in if you remember are also separate pieces so those are being remeshed individually by itself as well right because they're not welded and then now i have this for a new low version a lower version right that is trying to give you clean geometry okay so hopefully that helps that question that came up uh, Rich, reading another question here. Is there any way to save spotlight images sizes, rotation, other adjustments, including its placement on the canvas? Yes, there is. Absolutely. Okay. So if you're using something like spotlight, so this will give me the capability to bring in any image. So let's just grab this image. Okay. And then I add it to the spotlight. Right, and then I start wanting to rotate, change the scale, position it where I want, right? All of this, okay? Then I go and I say, let's add this image as well. Beautiful, right? And I start manipulating this. Let's actually go into Lightbox here and let's grab some textures that are in here for us as well. So let these load. Let's let's grab these tree barks. Okay, so let's do this. Maybe we'll put a tree bark here, put a tree bark here. We'll size this up too. And let's, uh, let's also make the colors match, the hue, be a little bit closer. And right, we'll grab this one, size that up. 
this one, size this up, rotate it. Okay, so now if I'm liking this for spotlight, okay, and I like where I'm at, you just come here to texture and you do a save spotlight. That's it, that's all you gotta do. Okay, and then this is load spotlight, right? So this will save out your spotlight. Okay, and then this is load your spotlight. All right, so that should answer that question. Um, Ruzi, you're asking for remeshing. If you want certain parts to be higher res than other parts, is that what you're asking for for remeshing purposes with Z remesher, or are you talking for something else? Ruzi85 is the question that came through. Uh, da, da, da. Well, yeah, you can absolutely, definitely do that, right? Because again. Right, these pieces even in here, right? They're they're their own piece, right? So I can split these apart if I want to, but even if I didn't want to split these and I only want to remesh these, the remesher works based upon visibility as well. So I can remesh this, right? And it's looking at this for remeshing, right? And you can see nothing else got touched, but those were remeshed. Right, so you can do remeshing based upon the visibility, especially of the shells. Okay. And then Doug, to your question, other question, when you're adding images, you wanna add all your images first, because by default, okay, Spotlight, it's gonna do the automatic tile proportion I'm, I'm sorry, not the tile version, tile selected. So if I select this, it's always gonna do this when you add an image. Every time you add an image, it's gonna reset this like that. Right, and then there's either proportion, selected, or unified. That's just built into it. Okay, but you would bring all your images in first. The ultimate document view for down here was really meant more for two and a half D. So this, I wouldn't bother even this. This is for two and a half D. It's really what its purpose was. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that for 3D. There's not really a big advantage of opening that other document. You can absolutely uh, guide the Z remesher for sure, absolutely. So even if I did say something here, let's just say this, I repolygroup it. You guys can guide it with, let's say I can do now a slice curve, right? And then I can say, I want this slice to come along here. All right, and then now I can slice and see it makes a new poly group. And what you can do is there's the keep keep groups option. And what that's doing is it's looking at now the poly grouping, right? So it's gonna try and use this poly group now as like a guide to try and keep that. So when I go to remesh this now, right? It's not only just remeshing it, it's using also the poly groups as a guiding force. This was added specifically for like hard surface because there's times we wanted to remesh and not lose a really good portion of our hard surfacing and try and maintain it as much as possible. So then that is why we added that groups options. Okay, and then this is going to remesh this and start looking at poly groups, right? So this is now just, it's a little too low, right? So I've got this lower, so I would probably up this, put this back to the default and remesh this and give the algorithm some more information to use to try and remesh this piece. Okay, so that keep groups comes in really handy, especially if you start using things like live booleans, which live booleans is making polygrouping and you'll be able to remesh stuff and be able to keep a little bit more of your form, right? And that silhouette to be able to remesh this, right? So see, it's trying to figure this all out for us. 
right? And then these are separate. This is a separate shell, if you guys remember. This is separate, this is separate. So it's reme remeshing this based upon separation of the shell, right? Because this is its own piece in essence, right? It's not actually welded, right? If you guys remember when I did that piece, that's why this is getting a different poly group than this. So this would be a great way to do, to do this, okay? To have that capability is I use this all the time, this keep groups. And then the slider next to it, smooth groups, that's telling it in essence, uh, let's see, let me see if we can create something. I'm trying to, here, let's do this. Let's create something that is not so pretty. So let's, uh, let's grab this guy. Okay. Let's, uh, let's divide them up. And let's go again. Right, and then let's turn this into a dynamesh. I don't want any projection, no blurring, and we'll we'll give it a little more resolution. Right, so, whoops, I was clicking up. I clicked too much. Oops, wrong ZBrush. Oh, I was trying to zoom and click. And I closed it. <laughs> and I just launched 4R8. We don't want 4R8. So let me get ZBrush 2018 going here. Hold on. Okay, so Paul, is there a way to duplicate subtool that is using different subtools as live boolean together non-destructively? Uh, let me f think of a way you're phrasing this question. So you want to duplicate a subtool that is that is using different subtools as live boolean together. So that's, do you want to you want to duplicate a whole a group of subtools? Is that what you're looking to do? So let's go back to this guy. Let's divide them up. We don't need all the subtools. Uh, we will dynamesh this. All right, we'll up the res. That's probably enough. Uh, that's actually, mm, that's too dense. I don't want it that dense. Let's just see what the default, there, that's plenty good enough. Okay, so let's say as an example for, for the remeshing question with polygroups, okay? When you guys are say, let's say we do something like this, and this is a great workflow that I like to build like uh, armor for a character. Is my pen back this, oh, why, why, why pen, why? I don't know, my driver just went kaput. Man, sculpting with a mouse, not fun. Okay, so I can control W and this is creating a new polygroup, right? Now, if I continue working on things here, right? I'm gonna go into this polygroup. That's not what I wanna do. So in the brush palette, in auto masking, I'm gonna turn on this mask by polygroups and that's gonna allow me to mask now only on the polygroup that I click on first. And so now I can create polygroups that are butting up right into each other, right? So I can do stuff like this if I want to and then clear it, control W, right? So it's based upon the polygroup I click on first, right? So if I click on this purple, you can see I don't, nothing else can be masked but that purple one. So that's the benefit, right, of turning on this slider. This slider is telling the brush system to be restricted, okay, to do this, okay? So what we can do now, all right, is remesh based upon the polygroups. Now, when you turn on this keep groups, this slider comes available. So what's happening is before the remesher even does the polygrouping, here's what's kind of, this is just a general, do you want me to repeat what? Do you want me to repeat the masking portion and making the polygroups butting up into each other? 
TJ3 Stacks. I like your name. TJ3 Stacks. Is that what you're asking? Is to repeat how I made these polygroups and butting up into each other? Okay, so uh, of course all I'm doing is masking, right? And you can see I can't, I can only mask on the green because that's where I started masking, right? So if I start on this like orange, you can see I can only mask on that orange, right? And what's controlling that is in the brush palette. Okay, in auto masking, there's this slider right here, mask by polygroups. And this is a global setting, so it does it to all brushes. Okay, so when I turn this to 100, okay, you now have that. Okay, you have this capability to do something like this. Okay, it's just a workflow I like. Now, I hope that answers the question. Okay, so this little polish groups, it's almost like doing this. If I went and say went to masking, okay, and I say mask by polygroups, you can see that those, only the edge of the polygroups are masked off. So I can inverse, right? So I can inverse this, right? And you can see only those, right? So I'm gonna blur it a little bit. And then now I'm gonna go down to deformation, okay? And then I can polish by groups and you can see it gets a lot cleaner, but I'm not affecting any other portion of the mesh. It's only affecting this, these edges here, right? Because those are the only unmasked portion, right? So of course, if I don't mask, right? I can just do this and you're gonna get, looks relatively the same thing, but everything, right? So you can see here, the eyes are being lost, the mouth is being lost more, the ear detailing, right? So what I did first was, well, I don't wanna affect anything. So I'm gonna mask the border, right? I'm gonna inverse it, right? And then maybe blur it once. I don't even have to blur it, right? Go to deformation and mask by groups. And you can see, boom, that's what we get. Now we're getting a, a lot nicer edge. And if I open this circle up, it'll become even stronger, right? So in essence, what's happening here, we added this on purpose because a lot of you were using Dynamesh and doing this technique. And the problem is you're not gonna get perfectly clean, right, edges. So this slider here is kind of doing something exactly like I'm doing here by hand, but it's doing it in the code. And so that's why when you go to remesh this now with keep groups, it's really trying to focus on this clean lines here and remesh based more upon that polygrouping border. Okay, and so what I'm gonna get as a result back, you can see my polygrouping is trying to be maintained here. Right, and then now it's trying to use that polygrouping as well. So I'm gonna repolygroup that right there. Right, and you can see it was trying to keep that overall silhouette there for things. Right, so it's very handy. I find it extremely useful. Okay, so I'd, I'd highly recommend it. It's a slider because of how much strength do you want, right? So even looking at this, right, if the strength that you need is gonna vary, right? So this didn't need a lot. But what if the mesh, right, was higher density? You'll need more strength to kind of make those edges start lining up better. Right, so right now the edges are doing like a stair, right? And I need them to start lining up, right? So depending on the density is depending on how much strength you're gonna need. So that's why it's a slider, not just a switch. If we made it a switch, then it's just a, a yes, no, right? By making it a slider, we're opening up your possibilities depending upon what you're sculpting and what you're making because we have no idea what you're gonna make, right? So we gotta give options for it. So it's a great question of, why is it not just a, an on off? Oh, because this on off is very handy as well, right? Because remember, this is affecting all brushes, right? So you can see I can do this and see it doesn't affect it, right? But there are times where maybe I don't want it to be 100%, so I can do this and see it's still blending a little bit, 
with the other polygrouping. But it, it's more 100% working in this polygroup. And where this really comes benefit is if you start using, say, something like a move brush, right? So you can see, see it's moving this further faster than the green, right? But it's not pulling it as much, right? So this having a control, we're giving you that capability, right? So if I do this, it's just pulling on only that, right? Compared to if I tell it to be more of like, not so strong, see you're getting, the polygraph I click on is gonna move the most, but the other one's not moving as much, right? And then you can smooth that back. And now you're gonna get a better blend. So that's why it's a slider. Because you might want some manipulation depending on again, what you're planning to do and where you're planning to go. Okay, so uh, I'm answering this one question that's popping up. Okay, so I'm just going to, Kintaro, you've got a cube. Okay, I'm going to, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this a better cube than what we have here. So let's, let's go eight by eight by eight, okay, so you've got a cube, here I'll make it bigger, okay, let's make it one polygroup for the sake of argument, then you're saying you're using a cylinder as live boolean, okay, so let's just go ahead and let's just append a cylinder, that's fine, and let's manipulate this cylinder, let's turn it this way, let's make it longer, and do this, and let's also turn dynamic on, so it's smooth. Okay, so you've got a cube, you got a cylinder, all right, and then you want to now, you want to duplicate the cube with the cylinder, so you can still edit. You, no, you can't. You can't do that. Not within ZBrush. You'd be able to do that with um, Z Scene Manager, but not with inside a ZBrush. You have to, because they're separate, you can only select one subtool at a time. So you would have to merge these down and then do your duplication. The default cube has poles because it's a, it's a mathematical equation in essence. So anything you guys see here with these, I'll come back to you though, um, Kintaro. Anything you guys see here with the cone and you see it says cone 3D, ring 3D, cylinder 3D. That means they're not actually a mesh that you can sculpt on. They're more of like something that you can manipulate, right? So it's a, got it so we can do stuff like twisting. Um, we can do different sides. So you can see you can initially, this is the major reason why it's got that, that pull is that we can change this into whatever shape that we want, right? You can go to a triangle, to a cube. That's the main reason, is having that slider, right? And then you just have your divisions again in any way that you want. But the main reason is being able to do something like this. That's really why it has a pole. I don't use the cube with the pole though, right? So all these have this. So like even something like the Sweep 3D, right? You can do some fun stuff. You can do this profile and you can change your profile. I can open up the top add another dot and say, do stuff like this, and then open up the bottom, right? And then I can add a thickness to this right off the bat. And now it's got a thickness to it, right? And then I can change my divisions, change my divisions this way, right? So it really becomes endless, right? So this sweeping, right? You can watch it change and manipulate it. I use this a lot for creating bases for a sculpt. Right? It's a lot of it's a lot of fun, right? Even if you guys grabbed this, not that, uh, this gear, right? This thing's endless, right? Of what it can do. It's got a outer ring, inner ring, right? You can add more spike points around it and have less. You can add, make it have a tilt. You can come up with some crazy fun shapes this way. Right, maybe something like this, right? Do you want to change the radius? Do you want to change the width of this, right? Do you want it not to be 360 degree coverage, 
right? What do you want to do with the outer ring so that there's nothing, right? So there's no, see, there's no spiking. You can go inward, outward. So put it to zero, and then you can manipulate. See, there's just so much to do here. Then you have all these profiles that you can start manipulating and playing with. So if we turn these on, back on, that'll affect the spikes down here. So you can do stuff like this. It's endless. So that's kind of like that could be a jet propulsion piece, right? Some kind of for the back of a jet or like a space shuttle. Right, so this is the point, and this is why some of them have poles and things like that. Why, so you can change it. Okay. So that'll allow you to do this as well. Okay. A uh, bunch of poles. Um, back to you, um, Kintaro. Yeah, so... Because these are separate subtools, you can't duplicate them both at the same time. All right, they got to be, if you want them to actually duplicate, you can merge them down, right? And then now you can duplicate them however you want. So you can duplicate this, and then you'd have to split them back apart. Okay, so that's one technique that you can go about doing this. Right, that was that'd be what you have you'd be what you'd have to do to do this. Now you can in the Z plugs if you save out say this as a tool. So right, so if we do this here, let's do this. Let's actually split these. Okay, and let's say this is doing this. Let's say that's a start, and then that's a negative, and we got live boolean now. Right, we've got this happening. Let's put this on smooth on all right so you got this right so what you could do is this you could save this out okay and we'll just call it cube right we'll save that all right and what you could do right you're you're liking this okay tool or this piece you can come here to the plugin come to subtool master and you can do a multi append or a multi insert Okay, so I can do a multi-append, and now it's asking I, how many, what do you want, right? And I say open, right? And you can see it's still maintaining the start group and also maintaining the Boolean. So this would be the best, one of the better approaches, right? You can save out just this tool, that section of that tool, and then that have that, and then you can append. And you can append multiple versions of this. Right, and then, so this is allowing us to append multiple tools as well. Right, so I say multi-append and I can say gorilla from print and then the cube, and I open this, and it's now gonna append all my sub-tools, all the start groups that I had, all the pieces, and it's keeping it all together. Right, so you can see I've got now, right, more of this, and then I've got the cube, and then see, and then I've got the two gorillas that I had here sculpting in the eyes, right? So these didn't have a start group in the tool, so they just became part of the next start group. That's why these are part of this now, because they didn't have an original start group. So you could do this if you wanted to. That is a way to go about this, using that subtool master. And then the difference between multi-insert and multi-append is multi-append always a, goes to the bottom of the subtool list. Insert is whatever is your selected Subtool, that's it's going to now just a, insert below that subtool. Okay? And so that's what's going to allow you to do that manipulation and do all that. Okay? Does that help? Uh, let me know if that helps. Uh, do you have a good one to de-weld, for example, the arms of a guy you just showed? I've made a character and then his hands follow the curve of the body and weld his hands in his hip. E, well, yeah, if you want to weld, as long as the vertex points haven't changed, right here there's a weld option. So when you merge down, if the item, so if we take something, here, let's take something simple like this, okay? And let's make this a poly mesh. And let's say, let's do this. 
and even do something like this, okay? And I split it, okay? These vertex points between these two subtools still line up perfectly, okay? What up, Thomas? Right, so now you have these two pieces. So if I go to this top one, open up merge, I can say weld it, right? And then I merge down and say okay, and now let's see, these are back to being welded and they're all one again. So if you're doing something where you have an arm, you break off the hands, right? As long as those vertex points haven't changed along that border of the hand and the border of the arm, you could use this to re-weld everything back together. Right? So that's a way to do that as well. So it can come in very handy. Very, 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 very handy. Yeah, okay. All right, let me see. Did I get uh, other questions in here that I missed? I'm just looking at the questions that I missed. Keep following the questions. I'll, I'll, we'll be able to stick around for another maybe 10 minutes because I got another meeting I got to get into. It's so sad that I don't have this. Now, um, one thing that I really like for hard surface um, is making on the obviously when we're starting to put some details in specifically like like scribe lining okay when i start to divide on this okay i've got this nice clean mesh right so i'm a big fan of making like my own chisel brushes like this right so you can have some nice lines like that right now the brush works very nicely when it's first drawn out where i can draw it over Okay, but if I now draw over again, you see you don't get a good result. So something that I like to do is store morph target on the high level. Okay, this particular brush has a layer brush turned on it. Okay, so as I'm sculpting, this brush is keeping equidistant depth now. So you can see I can sculpt over top and I'm good to go. Now for me, putting on scribe lining, I actually like to use this feature. I like to click, hold the shift key, and say I want a line going 45 degrees that way. Then hold the shift key and say 45 degrees that way. And then now let me go this way, go that way, and then now start drawing. Right? I'm a big fan of this feature actually. Okay, which is we added in 4R8. But for me, it really opened up very cool ways. And then see, I, and with this, Okay, I can now turn this, right? And I can start close to this, right? And I can say, I want this to just continue on here, right? So it can remember, I what I'm using is lazy mouse. Okay, so now by default, we've turned lazy snap off. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back to 40. All right, and then now if I'm doing what I was doing and then coming straight across and then maybe coming up, and now I rotate, and now I want to start again, right? You can see I can continue a perfect scribe lining going across. Because I'm using the new shift capability with a line, and I'm using now this continuous stroke. And then I, I can even start from here and continue the stroke like this and keep rotating and coming along like, like this, right? I find this very useful to create those scribe lines. Okay, so this is one way. There are other ways. Okay, so I can start doing something like this. So, uh, Skugga 2, could you unweld by polygroups cause it's welded when I dynamesh it? So, in essence, you. Wait, I'm just reading your question. I don't have any groups and it's so long ago in the process. So what Roy is putting is something I think where you are looking for. So uh, it's tough to like, let's say you get this right and you don't have any groups and now I actually want to cut across this let's just say. So you can use masking to do it. You can do whatever you want right. I'm just going to do a quick and quick way with just I'm just going to slice across this. 
okay, and do something like this. So this is creating two polygroups, right? So look, what Roy's mentioning, you can turn on this groups option, okay? And then when you go to read Dynamesh, ZBrush automatically closes off the group for you. Right? So you can see this is automatically being closed off for you. Okay? So you could do something like that. Right? So the, the benefit of this is you can just, something like slicing, you can just keep slicing across and redynameshing, right? See, it just keeps it welded. But if you turn the groups on, it actually makes them separate pieces automatically and tries to close up the best it can, right? And so this is using any polygrouping. So if I start cutting across like this, see now these become their own pieces as well. And then this becomes its own piece as well. So it's using that grouping to do that. You could, um, Godorian is asking about using the chisel with the curve um, instead of doing what I'm doing, right? What I was doing here. So um, they're bringing, bringing up the question is, instead of doing this, okay, can we just turn on curve mode, right? Within here, right? And then draw out the curve, right? And try to start having it wrap around, right? So this isn't going to work with the shift key, if that's what you were hoping. Okay, but what I could do is this. I could do something like this, repolygroup it, right? Go to stroke, curve functions, right? And then now it's framed, right? And then now I just click and start dragging. And then there you go, right? And now it's trying to go around the whole thing. But this has now got an intensity control to it, right? So it's slowly losing intensity. Everyone see that? Okay. So if I don't want that in the stroke menu, okay, curve modifier. See, there's an intensity control right here. If I turn that off, it's now not using the intensity, right? And then now, right, I want to click on this and start dragging. You see, you get the whole thing. Right, and then you can switch back and forth, and then you could do something like that. So something like this is possible. Right? So, but holding this and then the shift, no, because, well, what we got to do here, let's turn off lazy mouse, right, and see now it'll work. Okay, so this right now, if you want to do what we're, you're trying to do, you have to turn off Lazy Mouse so it goes around the whole thing, right? Because with Lazy Mouse on, when you're holding the Shift key, it's doing that other feature I was just doing. And see, now you can just do this and start sculpting into this, right? But then it's, it's looking at, see, there's a bigger gaps. Right, so this is why then I would turn Lazy Mouse back on and then have Lazy Mouse use this, start using this for me. Right, but see, the curve's gonna move. Right, so what you might wanna do, if you're gonna do this, okay, in curve mode, you probably don't wanna have bend on. Right, so that it's just giving me the curve. Right, and then you can sculpt with the curve. In essence, see, I'm using the curve to sculpt. And now I got to start finding the right settings in here. So these are curve stepping. I can make this be lower. Right? You get very different results. So there's all that capability. So the shift key will wrap, but you got to turn that lazy mouse off. You got to turn this off if you're going to have that on. Okay, that answers your question, I hope. Okay, did I miss any? 
<laughs> fun doug <laughs> dougie said uh didn't see, that a gorilla i didn't see the name because i put the gorilla on my silly sculpt I, don't, I wanted to do a test with 3d printing okay so for me the going back to where we started this whole thing right this project primitive for me really has opened up a lot of possibilities of things i was just not able to do before because i have this projection capability right and doing things like this you know and even coming up here like this right and let's add some tessellation right and then maybe i don't want it to blend as much so i'm going to bring that blending down and now i got something like that right and then i'm going to say symmetrical along the y but then i'm going to say let's add radial capability right and you can start doing stuff like this how many do you want right and say i don't want as many maybe something like that and then right you can start really having fun with this right and manipulating and changing this so you can go crazy and you get multiple symmetries if you want to but then this is the point i can click on this accept it and then reuse this somewhere else if i want to that's why that what accept cone is so important because now maybe i want to use it again and do something like this and maybe push it in or push it out and a variation maybe stretch it along the cylinder now so you can do something like that right it's it's pretty awesome what you know and then maybe i want it to be like that instead it's just it's endless the things that you will be able to do so i find i, I find it a lot of fun Right. And I'm just sitting here and saying, OK, accept that and go back into this. And then there's that. Right. And I got that defining little radial shape that previously being able to do it like this wouldn't be so great. It wouldn't be as fast. It's just a circle radio radial. It's just looking at it's just trying to keep if we go backwards. OK and let's go back into this it's looking at this one where this one's sitting in space so here if we turn this on and it's just trying to keep them equidistant circular right and it's just see as you move them in and out it's just trying to keep them equidistant apart from each other that's all it's doing right so even if i was to do this right you're just rotating the piece is all i'm doing now right so it's just doing something like that now and then i can Manipulate it and play with it. Right, whatever way I want to go about it. Then maybe rotate it back, bring it back in like that. And I'll have a slight rotation to it. So it's just a round radial. There is a simple reset button for sure if you want to just reset this okay and maybe i want to put this back in the middle okay you can hit reset right here and then that just resets this right back to here but it's still all the cones are being remember what i was so there's a simple reset okay and then there's the full reset so full reset is setting everything th this particular deformer back to its defaults all the cones are back to the defaults in this case it's back to the perfect sphere all right the reset is just so if i do say something like this and i do this right and if i just do a reset right it's just resetting this back to here right it's resetting those but if i start to do cone work on this right i start to manipulate the cones like doing stuff like this and doing stuff like that right and playing with the blend right if i go do a reset right see it's still staying the same the cones aren't being reset they're still being manipulated and played with right so all this is being remembered so a full reset 
remembers and resets everything. Cool. All right, any last minute questions before we call this a stream? Call this a Dunsky. You can absolutely use a text as a primitive. Absolutely, 100%. Yep, 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 yep. Right, so with that said, right, we could do something like, let's go into our plugins. Let's do a new text. Let's put ZBrush uh, for Giggles 2018. Right, it's going to create that for me. Right, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> let's put a little bit more extrusion in there, so make it be a little bit wider. You know what? Let's throw a little bit of bevel on that, so these shapes have a bevel. Let's add a little bit more resolution, so the numbers get cleaned up a bit more for me. Um, what do I want to use as a font? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Let's just. Ooh, that's different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's use that, okay? Now, I'm going to want to maybe size it down a lot more. Okay, let's even bring it out here like this, and let's size it down maybe something like this, okay? And now, if we want to use this, right, as a Boolean, Man, it's so hard to work with a mouse when you've been working with a pen for so long. Okay, so this is my start group. This is my negative, right? So live booleans is on, right? And you can see I can push in and use this lettering, right, to do this. Now, what's great and what's cool is how about let's do a bend arc on top of this, right? So here, I'll turn on polyframe so you can see what's happening. So what I want to do is start bending this this way. Right, so you can see I can start bending these letters and I can play with how they are bending. So that's the radius there, maybe a little bit more like that. Okay, and now if I turn it off, I'm actually even putting ZBrush around the cylinder as a Boolean cut. Right. And by default, this is automatically looking at the fonts you have on your computer, true fonts only, but then you can load any font you want. So you can load a font from your, from your disk. Okay, so then this is me now just using the deformer to start manipulating and going at it. All right, and then I'm just, again, I turned on polyframe just so you could see it being manipulated, right? And so this is how much does it get pushed back, right? And then this is uh, changing the, in essence, the uh, penumbra or the opening of this, right? And then I, I hold the shift key and I can snap to things if I want to, right? Not hold the shift key and I can do stuff like that. And then it's just cutting into the surface. You're going to want to probably clean up the mesh though, right? Because this is very triangulated. So it's not really built for stretching like this. So do, I would use the Ziri mesher to clean this up before I even started bending this. Which just goes back to, this goes back to this everybody, right? So if we come back to this, let's turn this off. All right, this goes back to a little bit of what we were discussing earlier with the Ziri mesher. Right, so I can even do this. I can grease by the polygroups and divide it up, even change this a little bit, right? And then now I can come in here and do a Z remesher with the polygrouping, right? And remesh that. And then now that's paying attention to the polygroups and it's gonna try and maintain this lettering based on this. And then the benefit to this is I'm getting a little bit more dense geometry right, for the purpose of me manipulating and wrapping around, right? This would be better to wrap around than that because this is, this the number one's not so good and the H, right? This has got more to it. 
okay? And when you divide, it's looking at, I'm looking at creasing, right? So you can see this is not creased over here. So I can fix that by doing a little Z modeler, do a little crease, do an edge loop partial maybe, and then do that. And then when I divide, see that's being maintained now. Right, and if I want the same thing here, I just click that and see. See how these are rounding? It's because this needs to be creased here and then here as well. And then when you divide, see it's maintaining it. But I'm adding more geometry. Right, and then now I would remesh. Okay, so that's a way to do that. Very useful. I use it myself all the time. In fact, like I made, when I made Rocketeer's gun, uh, his gun, I had lettering all over it, right? Or there was a joke earlier with a gorilla, you know, that I made, that I used the actual wording gorilla and put it in my sculpt. You can put your name in it, put your logo in it, whatever you want. This is all recorded. This is immediately goes up on our YouTube channel and it immediately goes up on this Twitch channel. All right, unfortunately, I'm going to have to call it now a stream. All right, I got to move on to some other meetings. It's been a while since I streamed. Um, dusting my rust off. Okay. And uh, as far as the Nomen question, what's your opinion on online stu studies at Nomen? It's great. I know a lot of people that do that online. Okay. So it's definitely a great way to look at it and to learn. And you're learning from a professional person that's in the industry. So you can't go wrong. You really can't. All right. So I thank you for tuning in uh, and listening to any of the bad jokes I had and answering all the questions I had. Uh, you, um, I had. You had. Um, next week will be Mr. Joseph Drist. Right? So um, my next stream is not going to be for... Hold on. Let me see because I've got... Let's see. Um, next week is Mr. Joseph, and then I'm the eighth. I'm the eighth. So myself and Joseph share this day. Joseph Drust um, goes opposite weeks of me, and then I go up. So Joseph will be the first of May, and then I'm the eighth of May. So every other week for me. And I'm trying. So, but before we leave, wait, 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 wait. Before we leave, Everybody, I, I uh, before we go, everyone, look at me, look at me, look up here, look up here, look up here. All right. What's important, everybody, is something on Zebra Central that I, I got, I, everybody, I really want to stress, and I encourage every single one of you to participate in this. Please participate and get involved. It's amazing. It's for a great cause. So we're teaming up with Magic Wheelchair. Okay, which this is a contest that we're going to launch on Monday. You're going to have the whole month of May. Okay, this is an organization, a nonprofit organization that makes costumes for children that are in wheelchairs. So they are doing a Star Wars themed one. Okay, and there's going to be seven builds. One of the builds will be Pixel Logic. Us, our employees here, like myself, Joseph Druss, Solomon, Kingsley, Kyle, we're all involved in building a build. The other one is you. We're doing a contest, okay, that you guys design the Star Wars piece that's going around the kiddos' chair. So uh, Magic Wheelchair calls them kiddos. Um, and you're going to be designing. So here's some great examples in here. There are... In essence, several teams. So Thingergy Inc., there's Monster Studios, there's Miss Master Robots teaming up with TG Props, Tom Spina Studios, Fawn Davis, which is part of Funko Studios, is tested. Adam Savage is doing one, right? And then we are doing Everyone, I can't stress this enough. Please be, you know, get involved in this. Just get, This is so great for these kids. Um, even if you don't want to make sculpt something, please share this. Anywhere you can. We really want to build some great pieces for these kids. Um, there are some great examples in here for you to look at for past builds. It's just incredible what people have done for these these kids. It's amazing. So this will give you all an idea of what past pieces have been done. 
Okay, but we're opening up a contest. So we're going to have a contest where you are, one of you will be picked as the winning design. And we have more announcements coming on Monday as well. So it's really about getting involved with this organization and giving back to them. And there's some other things, like I said, that we're going to be announcing on the Monday when the contest starts. So the contest is going to take place on Zebra Central. So you're going to have to be posting your works in progress. We as a company for our build, we're going to make our own thread and we're going to show you what we're making and we're going to show you our process along the month as well. So we got all the month of May and we're going to show you that. And then the winner that's picked for the contest gets to work with um, Frank Ippolito and his team at Thingergy Inc which does amazing stuff and amazing work for several shows. So you're going to be handing your design off to that team, and then they're going to be physically making the costume for the kiddo. Okay, so please get involved. It's really awesome. Um, it's such a great cause for these kids. And we did a podcast with Magic Wheelchair. I would encourage you to watch this podcast and you can really grasp and understand what this does. The, uh, Magic Wheelchair was founded by Ryan and his wife. That's Ryan right there. Um, and I'm telling you, good luck not crying during the podcast if you listen to it because uh, it definitely choked, my, choked me up big time. It's just, I love this kind of stuff, being able to use ZBrush in a way that's giving back to somebody. You know, And next week I'm going to be at a conference that deals with people doing like nose replacement, ears replacement. It's really cool to see ZBrush being used this way. So um, I wanted to end with this actually. So please do get involved. Even if you don't want to sculpt something and make something, please just share. So you never know the ZBrush people you're connected with that want to make something inside of ZBrush. Okay. Thank you again for tuning in. Have a, a wonderful week. I'm looking forward to see those of you that go get involved in the contest, see what you're putting up. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. This is Paul. Did you know that? Saying I'm out. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>